2018 regular selectmen's meeting. All the selectmen are here. The town manager's here. Assistant town clerk is here. Yeah, we've got school board members here. We have the superintendent of the school here. We have uh, James from Envision Berwick and Planning and Water Department. We have all kinds of members coming in. Is uh, please stand with me and salute the flag. First order is the approval of the minutes from our January 16th meeting. So moved. I'll second it. Is uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. First public comment. First public comment is 15 minutes. Is if you have a comment, please come to the podium and address all questions through the chair. Seeing none. We have no public hearing tonight. Is, is I'm going to ask a question do you, of the the school board members. Do you know if Dustin is going to be here tonight? All right, is, uh, I, I was going to bring you guys up forward, but I've got, we'll wait a little bit and uh, see if Dustin shows up. Um, that will bring us to the BC T BCTV committee report. Um, <laughs> you think I'd say that enough at home. But <laughs> <laughs> well, Jody Puffer was supposed to be here this evening for appointment. She texted me just a little bit ago to say that she believes she's coming down with the flu well, and I asked not her here. not to come. <laughs> um, so Jody Puffer will be joining our committee. Um, finished several other videos including the Ryan's House project which should be up tomorrow. Um, also am running an MMA special public service announcement which we got as a partner with the Community Television Association of Maine and what it is is looking for public service workers. So it's a public service announcement that says basically they're looking for plow drivers and police officers and all of these positions that they're having trouble filling throughout the state but at, here in Berwick as well. So I thought that would be a great what PSC. About the private sector? What about the private sector? Can we put that out there too? We don't. I'm really We're sorry. All taxpayers huh? in town. <laughs> <laughs> Businesses, right? Yeah, I know. Well, we, we, Nonprofits. We, 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 we can talk to you about sponsorships. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> um, otherwise, we've been really busy. We do have our cameras coming back. We should be picking that up within the next week or so. So we'll have we'll be at back up on cameras. I did look at a new camera which does little slides on the bottom. As a matter of fact, it's really kind of cool. We can connect it with the scoreboard at the teams for the schools and when it changes scores, it will change on our recording, which is really kind of neat. Um, so I'm looking at getting one of those for the schools um, to do videotaping there, but the one that we're going to get here for us will hopefully work in our studio, studio as well as recording school board meetings and other events in town. Um, so that's kind of exciting. We have uh, another member who may be interested in joining our committee. We may add an alternate position. Um, uh, this person has offered to assist us with long-term planning. Um, so looking at BCTV now and where do we want to be 10 years from now, which is one of the things I did in 2014 but has now been completed. So we will need to update it. So those are some of the things that we're working on. We did hear back from Comcast. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's kind of the gameplay. Um, basically, they came back. All the stuff that we had kind of agreed to, they changed. Um, so we're changing it again, and we'll send them back the information that we would like to see in there. And uh, hopefully we'll get this straightened out in the next well, month. Is their, con is their contract been up or is it it's coming been up? It's been up. Yeah, but mm -hmm. it, are they going to be retroactive for uh That's what we're going with, yes, mm -hmm. is that yeah, it would go okay. from the time July 1st. Is this common to Comcast to drag it out? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It is. Yeah. I mean, and it's Any silly franchise. stuff. Any franchise. Time one is the same way. It's 
like they changed how many houses per square mile you have to have. I was just going to ask. You know, you it's did. just silly stuff. But Nightmare. the fact is, they already oh. agreed to do the last two roads, so we have no other roads to do with that. Get point. the one that's calling me off the list. <laughs> All right, please. Whatever it is. <laughs> okay. Oh God, it's 2018. Seriously, people. Oh, my God. No, it's ridiculous. It's yeah. ridiculous yeah. that yeah. they run it to a certain point. They're going to get the revenue back. We know that. Right. So. Right. Yeah. No, yeah. it's it's a game play, and I think they held off thinking that, because we had emailed them several times saying we're trying to do our budget and yeah. prepare for the next year, so they held off. Now they're sending it in just at the deadline saying, oh, yeah, here it is, and you can all agree, and we'll be happy, but. I don't How want to play that. How many houses did they change it to? Do you remember? I think we had gone down to 20 houses, mm -hmm. and they upped it again to 25. Um, yeah, we we were 30. Yeah, we were 30. they had it at 30. So 25, according to Tony, mm -hmm. is the baseline. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's silly stuff, but okay. we, we will get it done. Any questions? Okay. Can we get Joe to the Thank you. Is that? Can we get Jody appointed, or does um, she have to be We do like to talk to him. Is we, we, we can wait one more meeting. <laughs> Envision Berwick. Which one? <laughs> Hello. Hey. Good Serena. evening. Serena. Um, we have a couple um, to-do items to ask of you guys. Um, the first one um, is we have an off. We're looking for authorization to allocate um, nine hundred seventy dollars from our Envision Berwick budget um, for a civil consultant survey uh, of the riverfront down below the dam. The project, the, the piece, the piece we just took over. Mm -hmm. That piece, piece, no. piece, that H piece. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the and the survey, I guess, would go um, even further down down the river. Um, but is this, is this to continue on? Because we had some survey done when we did the MS4 work. Is, yeah. Is this is continuation of that? Yeah. Um, I guess the um, <clears throat> that survey didn't go as far as we. Right. Right. We, yeah. We never we never established the boundary down the end down river from everything. Mm -hmm. so we, were, we were all looking for that and couldn't find anything. So. Yeah. So Let me see what I can do about that bill. Don't ask us for approval right now. I think I might be able to take care of that bill with him. For you, so instead of spending nine hundred seventy dollars, I can work with Tommy and I, a friend, so I can get it straightened out. So you may not have to pay any money to get surveyed. Okay. Okay. Is that um, something we can wait on? I mean, he owes me. <laughs> I, I would, doesn't know it. I guess I would know. rather have the authorization to be able to, like. Yeah. Would that be possible um, if we have the authorization? Go ahead and, yeah, if and then, and then, if it, we then don't I'll, end up needing to then use I can, it, I could get jump right on them. Yeah. Would that be yeah. Would that be okay? Yeah. With me, yeah, if that works. Yeah, okay. that works. Just so that so we, we yeah. don't have to come back and yeah. like yeah. ask for authorization. Okay. Do I take that as a motion to authorize, Mark? Yeah, I think so. I, I, I you know, Tommy yeah. and I are always swatting. I, he's ahead of me now, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what was the dollar amount? Nine hundred seventy. Nine hundred. It's nine hundred seventy, but James, is it nine hundred seventy-five? All of a sudden, I'm not sure. Um, Go with the higher. It doesn't matter. It's, you know, <laughs> okay. 975. Okay, right. sure. Right. And I second it. Right. Um, we have, okay. we have a, a, a motion and a second to approve mm -hmm. $975 expenditure for a continuing survey of the riverfront. Awesome. Is any discussion? No. All those in favor? Thank you. Thank First you. First item. Um, and the second one was I, when I was here before the holidays, we, um, I came to ask you guys about um, impact fees to be able to pay for the design services for the, that park area, um, to which you said uh, you would look into the dispersal policy for the impact fees. So yeah. I was just following it, up uh, on we, that. Uh, we, we talked to the finance director, and it, it just basically it's an authorization by the board you know, to, to take that money out. Okay. So, so I guess then I will follow that up with an <laughs> authorization Another request, re request um, to then um, be able to allocate the impact fee funds in the amounts of um, $2,475 for phase one and $2,405 no, $2, for the second phase of the design services um, for the Great Falls Park project. 
And that's with the Cornelius, the, what we talked about before. Right. And uh, you know, finally, finally get that okay. And what was the figure again? Okay, so phase one is 2,475, and phase two is 2,405. That's for design services? Yes. In two phases? In two phases, yeah. The first phase um, is the site and project design, and the second, oh, no, just kidding. It's broken out into smaller things. <laughs> well, Selena, why do, we, why do we need to design? What, so, so walk we, with, is that something we have need for approval? Can we just go out there and stake out some lines where the paths are going to go? And No, so we need a design to be able to look at the plan, look at the park holistically, and figure out, like, what is the most efficient way to utilize it and like thinking about the long term of the plan and the long term of the land so it's like an an area that's kind of vulnerable to like flooding and erosion yeah. and with like the work that's already been done there because of the stormwater outflows um i want to be able to have a, a design so that like that can all be integrated into it rather than just like people willy-nilly going out it. and doing it and it also adds like a little bit of a legitimacy to like being able to find matching grants to help us with like other recreation projects in town and like um what were some of the other reasons we talked about are you looking for grants grant money um i think we will be um once yeah. we get it started so it's like you know, getting it started with the design, and then you have something to prove and leverage to help get right. other. I think that funding. was the girl that was just appointed, right? She was she had grant writing experience. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is, um, <coughs> is that who we plan on using for that, or is what? Did you have somebody in mind for writing the grant process? Or? Our last name. Um, I I actually don't know who you're talking about, but I think we've been in touch like with the recreation um, master plan committee because they are going to be potentially like working on things in the years to come. Um, I'm, I'm probably writing things right now. Yeah, James is also always aware of the grants going on in okay. town. So Is that who so it is, Elena? Is that? Elena. Okay, thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, okay. her name. That would save us, <laughs> save us some money as well, I think, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're looking for $5,000 yeah. for what, a, a landscape architect, a civil engineer? What What is it that you're looking to hire? This is this is just for the design. So it's the full so it's basically a schematic design, the working site plan, um, community co collaboration, like coming here and meeting with us and um, having interactions with us and feedback loops. Um, and let's see what else is on here. Yeah, base mapping, all of that stuff. Would you send it to me? What? Just email it to me when you get a minute sometime. The, the proposal? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah we. Is, is they, they were, I don't know if you were at that meeting, Mark, is back in December. They, they were before us describing what they were looking at, and uh, you know the idea was to to get this design, get this done, and then, like Serena said, to use that as as the base as leverage. You know, if you have, it's it's better to have an official document with a, somebody design it rather than just going, you know, and saying, hey, this is what we want. So that's one. And of the, the other thing is, is I do that. I do actually want to have that like that DIY approach in terms of um, like getting in there and doing some of the work like I want to be able to organize community work days to be able to do the work so we do that because I feel like that's the part that really gets expensive sometimes and so it'd be great to be able to have I mean in the fall or actually that was the summer in the summer for our first cleanup day there we had like 40 or 50 people come and help so um, if we can do that again but this time um, with direction. With direction, <laughs> um, it would be it would be really really awesome, and people seem to be into that kind of like do it yourself um, yep. project work here. So okay. I would think for a grant they would require something like that just to show the commitment. Yeah. Yep. So I yeah. Right. Um, yeah. think that it's something you'll need. And it's kind of working off older designs too, even okay. that like people yep. have done over the years that were just um, yeah thrown around. So. Okay. It would also be able to help us keep, like, to really understand the plant palette. Like, we did a walk through with um, some local plant experts just to get an idea of, like, what native species were there and what invasive species were there. And so the design will also help us pinpoint what plants we want to keep there and what plants 
we should work on getting rid of over time and which trees we should definitely not cut down and those types of things that like uh, I wouldn't really know otherwise. So. Good. That's fair. Cool. What is your email, by the way? Mark at Salmon Falls Nursery. Okay. Com. I'll, I'll make a motion that we use money from the impact fees to fund the design study for the riverfront parcel, the former public service parcel, to be done in two phases. The first phase for $2,475 and the second phase for $2,405. I'll second your motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. I'm glad to see impact fees being used. Cool, yeah, <laughs> great, thank you. Um, I think that is all from Berwick. Um, we were wondering about the credit, en credit enhancement stuff from a previous I'll meeting. get that to you, I'll have to do it electronically. Yeah, I'm hoping Mr. Cahe is, will be here next week. Mm -hmm. He's planning on it, but I'll wait until he's here and he and I can talk more about it and I can draft up something that uh, more in line with what he, he's asking for, if he qualifies. So, uh, but I can get you a sample. I mean, they're all very different, but. Okay, and so this is just in regards to these, um, the joint meeting that the Planning Board, Select Board, and Vision Berwick all had before um, the holidays. Um, you were asking us about the credit, what credit enhancement agreement um, things we might be interested in talking with Mark about. Yeah. Um, and I think people in the room were a little bit confused at what types of things those could be. And so we were wondering if you could give us a list of what other communities um, seem to Put use. Put in their credit enhancement agreement. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Usually it's incentives. That's what I'm used to seeing. Yeah. So jobs incentives, if you hire so many people at this amount of money, um, wages, and you might get a better Enhan credit enhancement agreement, better, okay. higher percentage, um, things like that. Okay. If you're going to be talking with Mark about it next week, would you be able to get us a list of that before <coughs> then? Yeah. So that we could um, email you any that we felt particularly strong about? He's, like I said in the email, he's, he's going to have to qualify. I have been talking to our attorney who, who uh, works with uh, TIFs and credit enhancement agreements, and she's very adamant about the fact that he has to show a need for uh, that before uh, he does anything. So, yeah. and there's, we know a, there's a bill in the legislature too, I think, that, uh, that failed. Cha changes the TIF structure, I think. Is well, that, no, it, it failed. It did uh, we, fail? We, yeah, yeah, we got, okay. did, it didn't come out of committee. Oh. Our attorney copied me on that because I was yeah. worried. Uh, it was being very selective. Um, so, but I'll get you something. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <coughs> Is, um, but we'll move to the, the school board members. Is, uh, this is more of an informal thing. It's not an interrogation. It's uh, more we're looking to hear about what we can expect for budgets and uh, what we're looking for coming up in this year. Is um, and we also want to hear what you have to for questions from us. So, <coughs> oh, thank you for all coming, by the way. Oh, absolutely. Um, my name is Dustin Price, I'm with the school board, currently this year's chair. Um, we're very early in the budget process. So the, speci the specificity of any questions you might have are going to be to the, you know, the amount of knowledge that we have here. So to help with that, I brought along Stephen Connolly, our current superintendent, <laughs> who has the up-to-date numbers because they do change daily. And uh, he's here to speak with you. So thank, you. thank you. Speak softly and carry in. Is that what it is? Okay. So yeah, laughter in the back. I like that. <laughs> All right. So... Uh, <coughs> This is my sixth, or I think it's my sixth budget working in the districts, and uh, I'll, I'll say that this is um, going to be the, the most complex, most difficult one, and I'm going to explain to you some things about that. Um, we are seeing some losses in our, uh, <coughs> in our typical revenue 
streams are subsidy streams. Uh, our, our essential programs and services notes that will, in the bottom line, it says we'll receive a 437,000, I think it is, increase to our subsidy, but I want to talk a little bit about what are the things that we've lost in that subsidy that aren't coming through this year because it should have been substantially higher. Um, we have a, a small uh, piece called proficiency-based diploma um, that the district should have continued to receive 40,000. That was taken out of legislation for the coming year. Um, we have a major change that's happening right now in career and technical education and that's that the money for those programs goes to the actual um, school, so that would be SRTC. And you might think, well, of course they do. Where else would they go? We, remember, we're a satellite. We, we have had the culinary program since the school, uh, the new high school opened, and we had early childhood through last year. And the way it works is that there's a two-year look back, so the money that um, when the early childhood moved this year, we're still receiving our early childhood funds and we we'll con should continue to receive them next year. Uh, and then for the culinary, we should receive them in the next budget, 1819, and then in the 1920, even though the programs move back over because it's two years behind. Um, so that's the current legislation, but it's changing so that the money does not do that and it impacts two school systems in the state right now, Bucksport and MSAD 60, that's $216,000. I'm going to work with legislators on our legislators on that. Uh, the regional, you may be, have been hearing some stuff about regional service centers, the idea about uh, taking all the, uh, the oversight structures for school districts and distilling them down to 8 to 12 uh, regional services, so everything from superintendent, assistant superintendent, business manager, transportation, facilities, maintenance, payroll, bookkeeping, um, special education, food services, uh, a whole host of programs. And um, we did agree to, the board agreed to uh, file an application to be part of a regional service center. If you didn't agree to that, there were penalties, financial penalties for not participating. Um, we have uh, opted in the first phase to join with uh, RSU 21 and 11 other school districts, uh, most of them in York County, some in Cumberland. Um, we completed that application phase. It was accepted, and um, in October, we received one write-up from the commissioner's office that explained this is how the funding will operate for anyone who joins a U an RSC. And then in January, we received a revised uh, explanation of how that works. And in the revision of the explanation, after we joined the application process, we find that we'll lose $139,500 um, in this year, and we'll lose uh, probably double that in the second year of the grant, of the uh, process. So we're, I'm currently working with uh, one of our legislators to uh, bring that to the floor and to people's attention. Also, um, a smaller amount, but nothing's insignificant on the main laptop technology initiative, uh, $29,000 loss. Then uh, Steve and I, when we met early, was that, was that this, this week, last week? I don't even, I I don't even know. Uh, mill rate. The mill rate is for, for folks who uh, might wonder what that means. For every $1,000 of property valuation, the state sets a minimum to say that um, municipalities must raise certain amounts. For instance, this year it's $8.19 per $1,000 on the total property valuation of the, uh, the communities that support the district. Uh, next year's mill rate with very little fanfare um, beginning January 9th, I think, was the first Six, seven, eight, nine. Somewhere, the first time I'd seen any discussion about a change in the mill rate, it went up. It's going up to eight dollars fifty-one cents. That thirty-two cent change on the property valuation, as a rough estimate, would be five hundred forty-five thousand dollars. And what happens is, the state pays less of its portion, and the local municipalities pay more. 
of the portion for education. It's a continual shift away from state responsibility. Um, so uh, one of the things that is, uh, I'm going to talk to you about something that's an, an incredible driver in our financial uh, considerations for the 2018-19 budget, and that is we are seeing an incredibly rapid increase, uh, significant increase in the number of students who are either moving into the district or um, coming in as five-year-olds in special education. Um, for instance, this year, in this school year, we have increased uh, from move-ins alone 50 students into our special education programs. That's nine, per nine and a quarter percent increase. What's the reason in, um, I think as I've talked with a few other of, our, of my York County cohorts, they're seeing similar um, numbers. And so I think that there are more and more students that are qualifying with, with, um, with a disability. There's a guide called the DSM-4, and it lists what qualifies as a disability and that it has to impact your performance in school. And we're seeing more and more students, particularly at the youngest elementary ages, uh, meeting those qualifications. We've got people moving from New Hampshire into Maine because we have a better, <coughs> we actually have a better program than the state of New Hampshire does, the state of Maine does. So <coughs> that's not that's not the reason. We, we don't know that. I mean, no, um, and that's, I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, in, in some, I used to work in the Portland School District and in, in another district, and in both times, we, any time we'd see fluctuation, that was the natural, that people would say, are we kind of like almost are we offering too, are the services too good? I mean, a kid's making substantial gain and so forth. And I think that if I was an administrator in, let's say, in Summersworth, I would say that the, 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 federal, the federal requirements, we're looking at exactly the same requirements, uh, the state requirements on that. It might be slightly different. But I think that that, that superintendent would say we're offering the same services as, uh, and if a student transfers from that state to this state in our district for a service, we follow the individual education plan that was put in place there. And same going in the other direction. So that really shouldn't be a factor, but um, I, I would say. Increase, <coughs> Other me? districts still seeing the same increase? For so some of, the, some of the districts are, some of them aren't reporting significant changes. It seems to be, this is completely unofficial, just as I listen to folks in conversation, it seems as though, um, the districts that have uh, 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 that have the highest socioeconomic status communities aren't picking up the same percent. Districts with lower SESs are, seem to be picking up a higher percent. Just just my observation. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and I, I didn't expect it. I thought it would be kind of even across the board. Um, so here here are some things that are happening. We have a, there's a service called Child Development Services that um, they begin working with three and four year olds who are identified as needing support. And then the students transfer from CDS into schools, usually almost automatically qualify for special education services. And so whatever our CDS numbers are coming in tells us a little bit about our trends and we need to, in, in our preparedness. So we knew that uh, last school year in 16-17 we had 18 students coming in from cds that was a fairly high number for our communities the cost um the cost the, the cost it, it really varies because sometimes we have a seat that's open if you have a let's say you have a you're a case manager and you are in a resource room and you have uh you can have a caseload of 25 students and there, there was an opening for that. So there's no actual specific cost to that, but sometimes a student might come in with highly uh, high intensity need programming. It might be something along the autistic spectrum disorder. Um, it, might, it could be something in the um, down, in a Down syndrome race. So there are all kinds of other qualifications that mean that you're going to be providing not only teacher support, but educational technician, one-on-one, -on -one or, or intense grouping. Um, this year, our number was 22, and we said, boy, that's our high. As far as our special ed department can look back in the records to say, 
that's a significant number for us. Next year, we are already aware at this point in time, we're a few months away from September, we have 34 cases. Wow. So we got bad water or what? <coughs> and out of the